जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे Sunday Satsang December 5th 2022 Brooklyn Dam and this uh, Shukla Paksha Kadyani Mas Mirga Shir Shamas Kobi Vastar Haran Alila going on this month in a few days on the 8th 8th of 8th of December Krishna will come and seal the clothes of the Gobis <laughs> and have a whole deal of them test their surrender That's this month. So questions? Nice, Raj. <laughs> this is so hard. This is Ras. This is Tavva. Class has to be based on Ras and Tavva. This is Tavva, this is Ras. <laughs> We've passed many lifetimes studying Tavva. If you get Kriva Bhagavan, then you take birth as a Brijvasi, then you realize Ras, Rasa Swadhi. <laughs> no more Tava. Tava. Gyan Gudi, Gudadi, you know. Uro, Uro's Gyan was ripped to shreds by the gopis. <laughs> well, Brijvasis, pundits kind of run down and they meet Brijvasis. Rishvasis ripped in the shreds. <laughs> all their fun, all their knowledge, and all their Vedanta understanding gets bewildered, gets bewildered and destroyed when they meet Rishvasis. How they think, how they act, how they worship Krishna. They eat something. Krishna, nice control. Here, you try it. What's this? This is a frame. Love, equal. And Raj, there's no God's not bigger than me. God's less than me. He carries me on his shoulders. I beat him up and he has to carry me. The game is whoever beats up the other guy has to carry the loser. The loser has to carry the winner. So Subal beats up Krishna and Krishna has to carry Subal. But Vishwasi had that Bob. Mara Putra, Mara Saka, Mara Pranapati. The Krishna is my Loka Bandhu. He's my, he's my friend. He's, Bhagavan is Vishwasi's Loka Bandhu. He's his good friend. Oh my God. Oh my God. I eat with God. I went with my friend, he was in Vrindavan, in a small temple in Akashi God. And uh, there was an old Babaji there taking care of some deities. And it was time for offering. My friend was there. So the Baba closed the curtain and came outside, rang the bell, and chanted some prayers. On the other side of the curtain, Krishna and Radharani were taking their lunch. And so then the Baba went in the, went in the, behind the curtain where the Takraji was, the Murtis were. And then, then he opened the curtain and said, come here, come inside. Krishna wants to see with you today. <laughs> he called it, called it this guy, he was a hippie guy, a Western guy. But he had some amazing fortune. So he said, no, Krishna wants to eat lunch with, Radharani wants to share lunch with you. So we, no, they're supposed to eat, no, come in. So he came and sat down, and he was Krishna. <laughs> This is Raj Bhav. No formality. Formality is, you have to leave it at the airport. <laughs> There's any formality, any, you have any customs, any etiquette, any etiquette formality. There's a sign you don't read because it's in Hindi. <laughs> But it's not in Russian or English or any other language. It says, if you have any formality, any etiquette, any good manners, leave them at the airport. Welcome to India. <laughs> Everything goes, anything goes. Because <laughs> we've been around the world, different places, and it's also like out of a uh, Xerox machine, you know. <laughs> it's all the same copy, copy. Every city is the same, every car, every road, everybody is the same. Carbon copies, carbon copies, carbon copies. Switzerland, Germany, France, English, America, every same. Cotton India, wow. This, <laughs> this can't be duplicated, this can't be copied. This, this can't be, it's impossible to copy this thing. Who would want to anyway? <laughs> It exists in its own tattva. <laughs> it's called the Bharatiya tattva. 
The Varti is there. Varti is named for Saraswati. So, it's a smart tattva. <laughs> so, what's the question? That's a comic introduction. <laughs> Set the mood. <laughs> yes. Question related to the eclipses. Okay. Um, and I asked myself, maybe this was already the answer, but because the Brat is seen in a different way. I asked myself, when Krishna, everything is under the control of our Takula, and why isn't, is it uh, inauspicious to worship them in this time? Because I, I couldn't understand. Maybe you can point to that. Well, it's a question about Grahan, Sri Grahan, and Chandra Grahan means eclipse of the sun and moon and there's all kinds of shastra, scriptural rules and regulations about sutak, sutak period means contamination period and swarsha and moksha when it gets free from Rahu, Ketu get free, Rahu gets free from swallowing the moon and the sun, it's called moksha and swarsha is when it starts to swallow so all these times are there, predicted, and there's rules and regulations. So the question is, well, Krishna and Braj, it's all rag, ragmar. It's all ragmai bhakti and Vrindavan. So why do we have to follow these things? Is that your question? Yeah, but especially why we, sh we shouldn't uh, worship him at this time, why we shouldn't make Krishna? Huh? Yeah, why we shouldn't worship him? We shouldn't worship at that time because according to Shastras, it's impure time. It's contaminated the time. It's, there's something in, in Veda called Kala, Kala Desha and Patra. Kala means time, Desha means place, and Patra means person, recipient, the doer, the receiver, the doer, Patra. So, so there's good time, like we have a phrase in English in America, there's a right time and place for everything. Yeah, like a guy's in, you know, on a bus and, and he starts kissing his wife and playing his wife. He said, wait, wait till we get home. <laughs> you know, slow down. It's not a public bus. Okay, sorry. You know, there's the idea of public bus is for transporting yourself from place to place, not jumping on your wife, you know. I you know ordinarily that some people are out of control, <laughs> but so there's a time and place for everything. So in puja, there's all rules of ritual purity that have to be observed. It's because Krishna, he, the rules of shastra are set up by Krishna himself. Krishna directly speaks so many rules and regulations of Murti puja in Uddhava Gita. In Uddhava Gita, 11th count of Vavatam, he teaches all kinds of things directly from his mouth about how the puja was pure, was impure. You know, so some places are pure, some places are impure. Bathing in Ganga is pure, but bathing in the Hudson River in Manhattan is impure. <laughs> Hudson River, you die if you bathe in there. You drink the water, you'll die. But Ganga is always pure, even if you drink the water, you don't die. If you do die, you get liberated. <laughs> if by chance you do die, you get mukti by drinking Ganga, according to Shastra. Hudson River in New York, you, know, you just drown and that's that. Turtles eat you or whatever. Sharks eat you or whatever. So that's, I mean, there's some groups in Vrindavan that don't observe eclipse. They don't start their, they don't start their puja. Radhavalava Mandir. Radhavalava is famous Mandir. Mandir Bhakti Vihari. They, they, don't, they don't follow the clips. They don't, yeah, he knows. Krishna Sharaj, he knows. They don't follow the clips. Radhavan follows. Uh, Rangaji and uh, seven Goswami temples. Radhavara, Radhavinda, they all follow. So if you have personal deities, like in your house, you don't have to follow because you're doing Bhav Seva. Hidari Vams was a Rag Bhakti. He was a, they say, the Siddha Mahatma. I don't know much about him, but he was some kind of famous Siddha Saint of Vrindavan. Hidari Vams, he founded Radha Valva, Radha Valva 
Parivar, Brahmara, where he fought. Worship around Krishna, Rag Mark. So a Nitya Krishna doesn't observe eclipses. I don't think so. Maybe just for fun, but you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of leaders that aren't described in our regular books we read that go on there. Just like, you know, he observes Brachi Twitya Puja and Yama Twitya Puja. Krishna's doing all these what are called Hindu rituals of puja and worship. Krishna's doing on Ithilia Galakarandavan. Sister worshiping brother, brother worshiping sister, Yamaraj worshiping Yamuna, Yamuna Devi worshiping Yamaraj. So Rara is worshiping the sun planet, that's in the spiritual world also. So, it's a little hard to digest. But you know, if you have your own D, you don't want to do that, don't, don't do it, forget about it. Obviously, Radhavavas are not, uh, you know, you can say they're not following Shastra, then they're not going to get perfection, they're not going to get happiness, but uh, they will because that's, that's uh, Krishna accepting their bhav. Everything else about their puja is ekdam paka pure, and paka on time, and nice shingar, and every, 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 every ritual is perfectly executed in that temple, in that sampradaya. They're very paka in all rules and regulations. But it's a clear to say that, forget Rao, get out of Rao. <laughs> Krishna, can, like once Prabhupada said, one devotee was complaining. He said, Rao, I have, I, Prabhupada, I have Rao in my tenth house. I can't make any money. The <laughs> <laughs> tenth house is house of money, I don't know, is it? Career. Like, yeah, art. Dharma art. Nine is dharm, tenth is art. I have three plants and nine thousand. <laughs> that's, that's better. <laughs> that's for religion. <laughs> but you know, the tenth house is money. So he said, Prabhupada, he's a Grihastha guy, married guy. He said, I have my tenth house, I can't make any money for Krishna or for my wife. <laughs> that's more important, forget about Krishna. <laughs> Krishna doesn't complain and beat you up and stuff, but your wife complains and beats you up. <laughs> she doesn't let you go. <laughs> she reminds you all the time, more money, more money. So, uh, Prabhupada said, what are you talking about? Krishna with his pinky toe, he can kick 10,000 rows out of your house. He said, rows my 10,000. He kicked all your 10,000 rows out of your house. 10,000, 9,000, 8,000, you agree on anything. My wife's name is Rahu. <laughs> we'll, kick, we'll kick her out too. <laughs> I never heard that. I, I never, they, honestly, they think that. <laughs> honestly, they think that. I never, I never met any lady named Rahu. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Hang in there. Hold on. <laughs> it's a wild mouse ride. <laughs> Roller coaster. <laughs> Questions? Energy. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Nice to have you here. <laughs> Does the birth Leela of Krishna exist in the spiritual world in any kind of way because of its joy and the rasas that are associated with it, considering that there is no concept of time there and lack of action? The question is, we asked you before, it was very nice you put question. Oh. The question is, in the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan, is Krishna's birth pastime take place because everything is all oh, pastimes are eternal and time is not really acting. Time is present there just to, as a feature of Leela, but it doesn't debilitate or diminish or break or make wear anything out. Everything's eternally fresh and young, but there's day and there's night. People don't get old and you know, all that stuff. 
But there's the sunshine, there's moonshine, there's stars, there's day and night. It's all transcendental. So the question about Krishna's birth is every single Krishna's lila, generally they say the birth best that only goes on in this world, in the material world. That's what the Acharyas say, birth and killing demons. But other Acharyas, I also read that in the spiritual world of Gaga Vrindavan, there's different parakashtas. Parakashta means air departments or com compartments uh, and different leelas are going on there. So like Gokul, Gokul leela, there's Gokul in the spiritual world and that's where Krishna has his baby with bad signs, stealing yogurt, taking birth there in Gokul, Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj and growing up and stealing butter and, and all this stuff from birth till three years old, that's Gokul. So Gokul, Gokul is here in Prakat and when he comes here, everybody in the material world can see the Leela when he's in this material world, in this Vrindavan. Time for a shudder, it's getting cold now. So, so I, I read a chart to say that Yashoda is there in Kokola, the spiritual world, as Yashoda and Krishna is eternally passing through that, showing those Leelas in that section of Lila Vrindavan. And anyone who worships Krishna like that, Bala Gopal, like Ujarais and people, they, they want to, they have outside, they have motherly affection for Krishna. They want to worship Krishna like a mother, like a father, little, little Bala Gopal. They'll, they'll get, well, if they attain Prima as a sadhaka practitioner, they'll go to that, that Goloka Vrindavan, to that, enter that compartment in the spiritual body, of, like a mother of Krishna, and assist assist Yashoda taking care of baby Krishna. And they'll be like that forever. Forever they can worship. It has to be that way. But every past on Krishna is Nitya. It doesn't, it's not here today, gone tomorrow. It's here today and here every day forever. And it's been here forever. You just drop into it when you have, when you have, the, when you have the eligibility, the qualification of Prem and attachment and that type of Rati, that type of loving mood. You, you can enter that place and stay there eternally, worshiping the Krishna you like and the Bob and mood of love that you like. Is that clear? Because our Acharyas say every little Krishna is eternal. So he's, he's taking birth right now, but we don't. We go to Gokul, we don't see Krishna taking birth. So that's another material universe. Another planet, another Vrindavan. But also, they say it's also up there. Everything here is up there. Like demons are up there in the spiritual world, but they're like such a rain that's why he said they're like holograms. And when Krishna wants to activate them, he activates them, they come to life, he can play with them. <laughs> they don't, they don't, he doesn't kill them. Here he kills the demons because they're representing atheism or something. He doesn't kill them, they just plays with them. <laughs> Puts them and freezes freeze them again as a hologram or whatever. <laughs> it's a little inconceivable, hard to understand. But it's, anything's possible there. Infinite possibilities. All he needs is entrance. Absolute surrender and prema. Absolute love and absolute, absolute surrender, that you're, you find your place there. Your own individual place with your own individual Krishna and all his associates with you forever. <laughs> it's a nice, friendly, intimate, personal atmosphere. Not like this material world. It's not very friendly, not very personal, not very intimate. It's scheduled places that sometimes, but there it's always intimate, it's always personal, it's always friendly. <laughs> this is Goloka Vrindavan. You want to go there? Good idea. I'll go with you. What is the question now? Yeah, Baba. Uh, I was reading about Putana, uh, Krishna, how he killed Putana, so there it is written. Liberator. Yeah, so it, it, like about her destination, it is written, uh, in a reverential mode she became a nurse for Krishna. 
Hare Rishma, Mother of Mother. Yeah, so, 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 so how? He's a wet nurse. So, so they have milk and rest, be Christian. So, my question is did she have those feelings to begin with to attain the destination? Or? Sputna, he said, this devotee is asking a question about Krishna Lila when he was born in Gokul after six, he was six days old, hardly moving anything. And Kamsa, the atheistic king of Mathura, sent a witch. It was a human being, but she was called a Kachari. K means sky and Chari means move. So the flying witch, you know, a broomstick program, you know. <laughs> Halloween, you know, the witches sit, sit on a broomstick and fly. She didn't need a broomstick. She, she had yoga city, she could fly in the sky. And she, I like to kill babies and eat their blood like a vampire type, vampiress. <laughs> so she's a Kachari, Rakshashi, Rakshasi. And she came to Gokul to kill Krishna, and on her breast she smeared poison. And she dressed up as a Brijbasi mother. She wore she wore the standard style clothing of Brijbasis, although she was a you know a different kind of personality. wouldn't ordinarily dress like a village girl. She was some kind of high class witch or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but she wouldn't dress like village with your village lady. But there's a certain style that they have, you know. They're very stunning women and, and UP women. So she came like that. And she went into Krishna's bedroom, maternity room there where the baby was sleeping. And picked him up, put her breast her stun, put her breast into his mouth and he wanted she wanted to poison him. She had enough poison to kill a thousand men. I got her rest. And Krishna said, what is this? You're coming to me like a mother? You're dressed like a Vrishvasi? You're coming to me like a mother? I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be merciful to you. Because Krishna is very merciful. He's, he's very merciful. Even this lady coming to murder him. You can imagine. Supornika came, Supornika and Ramalila came to propose to offer herself for the pleasure of Ramchandra, and he ordered Lakshana to cut her nose and ears off, because he had a vow to only be with one woman, Sita Devi. He's a king. His father, Dasarath, Dasarath is the father of Ramchandra. He has 360 wives, one for every day, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, she's up with his father, it's 360, at least he can take two. <laughs> Two's not too many. He's a king after all. He's strong, rich, powerful, everything. So he didn't was, she wasn't accepted. But Krishna, this lady came to kill him. He, he was so merciful, he said, I'm gonna kill you because you can't kill me. So you have, somebody has to die here. It's not going to be me, but I'm going to promote you. He made her into a dachi, a nurse, a wet nurse of Yashoda. You know, when Yashoda doesn't have any breast milk, then Putna will put her breast in Krishna's milk and give him milk in the spiritual world. So she, who's asking a question? You, yeah, sorry, forgot, I did you. So Krishna accepted her. Except her, she dressed like a mother, she posed as a mother, she acted like a mother. So she was dressing like Mother Yashoda, posing like Mother Yashoda, acting like Mother Yashoda, offering her breast for Krishna to take her breast well. So he said, okay, you want, you want to be, be like Yashoda? Okay, I'll make it like Yashoda. You can't be Yashoda, but you can be like Yashoda, be a Dachi. The Sanskrit says Dachi. Dachi means a wet nurse. So that was Krishna. And in Jiva Goswami's commentary, he said, he simultaneously killed her, at the time of killing her, he gave her praying. She's an example of Kripa City. She didn't do any sadhana, any, any kind of sadhana. She came to kill God, not worship God, not chant his name, sing his glories, worship and do puja. She came to finish him off, to murder him, 
and Krishna accepted that as some kind of offering because it was a Vrindavan, it's a special, special mercy of Rajadam and many things going on here. But Krishna promoted her, gave her perfection, and time, he killed her, and he gave her praying at the time of death. She gave, her, she gave her a witch's body, and he chopped it up and burned it like a snake, burning a poison snake. And she went to the spiritual world immediately got to sit there, got a spiritual body as a nurse. So, you should worship food now. <laughs> no, don't worship food now. But just see the worship of Krishna, see the Bhaktivad Salya, the intense of compassion. He even imitated her. Imi Putin was not a bhakta, but Krishna was so affectionate to her because she imitated a bhakta. She imitated Vrishvasi, the param, param bhaktas, prematura bhaktas, the highest, highest expression of prema for Bhagavan is found in Vrishvasi. It shows one of the highest prema bhaktas in the universe. Higher, higher than you show is Radharani, that's the only next step. The show, regular Radharani is to show the supreme love of Krishna. So Kudna disguised herself as Yashoda, like that idea. So Krishna said, okay, so just see, if, if she had such good luck, maybe we'll have some more luck also. Yeah, it's a great encouragement for bhaktas and sadhakas that are worshipping. You know, I'm not a witch, I'm not, I'm not a vampire, I'm not trying to kill Krishna, I'm trying to love him and serve him, so maybe he'll take me to him also. I don't have praying now, I'm not aware, I'm not aware that I have praying. I don't think I have praying, it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> my hair's not standing in, my tears aren't shooting from my eyes. I'm not showing any symptoms of praying or even proper behavior of praying bhakta. But who knows what's going to happen in the last moment? Anything's possible, especially in Vrindavan. This is a land of infinite possibilities. This is Chintamani Bhumi. This is not Berlin, Switzerland, Moscow, Siberia, New York, London. Paris, Paris. <laughs> Just having faith in Vrindavan is enough to attain city. Have faith and don't make up rods. That's not easy. <laughs> That's the hard part. That's the catchy thing. Okay, have faith in Vrindavan, but up rods, oh boy. They, they're haunting like a ghost. <laughs> they won't let me go. <laughs> let me go. <laughs> okay, question. Italian department. <laughs> She's in charge of Italian translations and communication. <laughs> She's got a Facebook, uh, all about Mandris. <laughs> it's all in Italian. She's really popular. Got a very Italian voice. You know. She reads Lila's and everybody likes it. I like it too. I listen to it. It's nice. What's the question? In Bhagavad Gita, it's two twelve chapters are called Bhakti related. Why eleventh chapter is there like? Vishwarupa Sandrasni Yoga looks like it's mostly jnana. <laughs> it's very... What's, his, what's your little brother's question, Fanaji? <laughs> How universal form is related to bhakti, bhakti yoga session? The 11th chapter... Uh, oh, Gita describes jnana, describes sankhya, describes mystic yoga, jnana uh, yoga. So, Aishwarya, that's to show you what not to desire. That's why Arjuna rejected it. Uh, this formality, this opulence, I don't like it. So, uh, so that's just a Bhagavad Gita is to whet your appetite and to clear out all misconceptions to prepare you for Bhagavatam. 
Bhavatam gets the highest, highest conception of Bhagavan and Braj Bhakti and Prema Bhakti are right on the gopis. So people are attached to all opulence and all that stuff, they'll like the universe, they'll like Ratrupa. They'll like it. A lot of people like that chapter very much. Ratrupa Darshan, Krishna showing universal form. But Arjuna, because Arjuna said Arjuna has a form and Krishna Leela has a sucker. Some people say he's Arjuna sucker. He's a coward boy in Krishna Leela. Arjuna sucker. I read that somewhere, I don't remember where, but I read it. I can't quote, I can't cite the reference. But he's also Arjuna, that's why he's called Arjuna. Sucker, because he's Arjuna, he's a friend of Krishna. So universal form doesn't really have much to do with bhakti, per se, but it shows, it shows the, it does have something to do with bhakti, because it shows the effect of bhakti on a bhakta. Chapter 11, the Ratarup Darshan is called, Ratarup Yoga. It shows the effect, the effect, the influence of bhakti on a bhakta. The bhakti is Arjun, and the influence is, I, I, I love you as a person, I love you as my friend, I, don't, I can't relate to this. So that brings out his love. His love is very intimate, very personal. It's not Aishwarya, it's not opulence and grandeur. He's not impressed by that. He's afraid of that. So this is pure bhakti when you're afraid of opulence. I don't want opulence. It may detract me from Bhagavan's sweetness. I'm your friend. He started feeling apologetic, feeling apologetic and begging forgiveness. Krishna, we ate together. We slept on the same bed together. We slept on the same bed together. There's past times in Krishna Leela where Narada Muni went to Hastinapur, I mean to Indraprastha, and he said, where's Krishna? He's sleeping with Arjun in his bedroom. So then, can I go? I said, hey, Narada Muni, you can go anywhere. So, <laughs> so he has a free pass anywhere. So, you know, he went in the bedroom and they were lying head to foot. Krishna was, had his head on the pillow and he was holding on his chest, he was holding the feet of Arjuna. And, and Arjuna's head was at the feet of Krishna. He was holding on his chest, chest Krishna's feet. And Narada Muni heard some sounds coming, some words coming from Krishna's mouth, and words coming from Arjuna's mouth. So he went to Krishna's mouth and he listened and he's whispering, Arjuna, Arjuna. And was, Krishna was saying it very lovingly, very affectionately, very sweetly, Arjun, Arjun, Arjun. And then he said, what's, what's Arjun saying? So he was here to Krishna, Arjun's mouth, at Krishna's feet, and Krishna's saying, I mean, Arjun was saying, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. So this is the Arjun that we know that worships Krishna with this intimacy. So when he saw the universal form, all his bhakti, all his prema came out, oh, don't, I don't want to see this. Like, a, if a, like the mother of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was a, a black person from America, was a world champion boxer 40 years ago. Very powerful person, Muhammad Ali. So imagine his mother was in the audience. His mother seen him get beat, beat up on the nose, and of course he hardly ever lost a fight. <laughs> <laughs> he knocked everybody out. <laughs> but still, she was, oh, don't stop it, stop it, don't, don't hit him, don't, you know, don't, don't hit my husband. Because she sees him in a certain way. So 11th Canto is to bring out, the, show the love of Arjuna. Because the whole book is about bhakti, so where's the example of bhakta? <coughs> Arjuna is a living bhakta in the pages of the Bhagavad Gita. So we have to learn about how does a bhakta think. Because Arjuna asked Krishna, how does the transcendentalist see? How does he act? Well, that's it. so Krishna speaks of Tattva, and that Tattva is shown by Leela of Arjuna, how he acts, because he's a transcendentalist. He's a divorce and lover of Krishna. So 11th Canada shows how he acts in a situation where Krishna is showing opulence and grandeur, Aishwarya, opulence, wealth, power. I don't like, I don't want, I, you're not, I don't like that Krishna. So that shows that Leela brings out the bhakti, the intimacy of bhakti, and the purity of Arjuna's bhakti. So it's actually an essential part of Bhagavad Gita. The whole book's talking about bhakti, bhakti, but it doesn't show any example of any bhakti. 
The Bible Talmud is talking about bhakti. It shows all, so many examples of bhaktas. Karmishra bhaktas, Gamishra bhaktas, Dasya bhaktas, Sakya bhaktas, all different kinds of bhaktas are there. And then Briyad Bhagavad Talmud analyzes all the different bhaktas and kind of bhakti they have and quality differences and similarities. Paratru ki jai. I uh, see it. <laughs> you for free? <laughs> I'll show you my gratitude. Sadi Sai Baba. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's good. Everything's good. What's the question? Question. I don't know whether these are the ones or not. There's something, I don't know. They smell really good. Kunda flowers smell good. I think these are the, not the Kunda flowers. I grew in my garden and it didn't get it like this. No, no, no. These are the ones. Well, mm -hmm. these seeds are compared to <coughs> cutting the flowers. <coughs> Jai Radhi, welcome. Swagatam. Jai Radhi. Who, who is this? <laughs> yeah. How to balance between ego and that's a nice question. <coughs> How to balance between ego and self-respect. First you have to, uh, you can't make any balance. You always be imbalanced until you realize what yourself is. You're speaking materially. Was it? How do you balance between ego and self-respect? There's no balance. That's why everybody's got problems in the world. Because they're out of balance. Because they're misidentifying themselves with the body. So therefore, the ego means identity. What is my, who am I? What is my identity? I'm big, so you should respect me. So I have a sense of self-respect because it's based on my external identity. My external accomplishments makes me a big, I'm a big person. So I have self-respect. But I'm saying we should under, first know what the self is. If you understand the self as the eternal servant of God, Bhagavan, then, then that's a respectable position to be in. Be situated in self-realization. Self-respect means to be situated in a respectable situ position. Respectable position is to be a servant of God. One is a servant of Krishna, he's respected by everyone in the universe. He doesn't, he doesn't have to worry, there's no need for balance. If you adjust your ego automatically, it's self-respect is perfectly adjusted. It doesn't even, because ego ceases to exist, and you only exist in your respect. You're in a respectable position as self-realized. I'm Krishna's bhakta, I'm serving Krishna, and all the world that respects me for being, because of that, rightly situated. I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about self-respect. It doesn't even efface me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything to me. You, you wake me, you break me, you take me, you shake me, you lift me, you drop me. It doesn't matter because I'm, 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 I'm in a compact and a loving relationship with Bhagavan, so I don't need anything from this world because my ego is pure and correct. But you're, 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 you're always living in ego and self-respect. You're in Maya. You're an illusion. Because your identity is wrong. There's no, no, we, Shaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Chinata Pisa Nichina, Turoya Vasishana, Amayana Amayana Dena Kirjana Slavi. We should be lower than a straw, we should think of ourselves lower than a straw on the street. I, you know, when you're a Krishna Bhakti, you don't need anything. You have Krishna Bhakti, you, you know, there's so many respect, you don't respect, I don't care. I mean, you know who he is, I'm nobody, you know. I remember I was, I was in an institution, 
I was so called famous, famous person in the institution. And some people would come, and I was staying in Prabhupada's rooms for Radha Dhamadar, 1989, 1992. People would come, because they never knew me, but they say, you know Mahanudhi Swami? I said, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know him. What do you, I asked the guy, what do you think about him? I, I read a couple of books. Uh, like, he said, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, well, why do you want to find him? I'll ask him some questions. I said, I think you look over by Iskand, you'll find him over there. <laughs> so I could have said, yeah, that's me, you know. You know, like sometimes I've been places, you know, at ISKCON, like places, and people say, are you so-and-so? I say, that's what they call me. <laughs> I say, that's what people, some people call me that. I say, yeah, that's me, you know, my chest goes out, yeah, that's like, we don't, we don't need anything, self-respect. We don't even deal with that, we don't deal with that quality. We're so busy serving Krishna and serving Vaishnavas, we don't deal with self-respect. We don't need it, we don't think about it, we can't even define what it is. <laughs> We're busy loving people and loving Krishna, and we don't, we don't worry about self-respect. You know who I am, you know I am, good, you know, that's better. <laughs> it's more healthy, you don't know who I am. <laughs> it's not a very intelligent answer I gave, but I'm just speaking from my heart what I understand about bhakti. bhakti Bhakti transcends self-respect and transcends ego. It says that ego is part of the subtle body, it's identity. Identity is a combination of your sabhav, your sabhav and your karma is all mixed together. Create your ego. But, but, but our ego for every atma is one ego. It's one ego, one identity. Jivara Surabhai Krishna Nitya Das Dasi. Krishna Das Krishna Dasi. That's one identity. The id, the id is one. I uh, one identity. You're a dust, I'm a dusty. we're all serving a Christian. We're one. There's no cause for fighting. And so we agree it's all one. One in love, one in seva, one in praying. Yeah, that's the way it is. Big love, small big, it doesn't exist. What's big? Christian God, and he carries the cowboys on his shoulder. Krishna's God and he drives a chariot for Arjuna on the battlefield. You know where the charioteer sits on a chariot? He sits behind the ass of the horse. He sits lower, lower than the ass. When a horse is fighting, he's always passing the stool. And right, where he's, right below where the horse is, Krishna's controlling the chariot. Sri Mahabharata. Krishna, Krishna driving the chariot of Arjuna and getting covered with horse, stool, and mud and all the stuff, blood from the battlefield. I'm not complaining. That's what I'll do for his devotee. You see how they show pictures, they show pictures of Krishna sitting up on the chariot, like Krishna's, Arjuna standing behind with arrows, and Krishna up there, you know, holding the reins. That's not what it's like at all. The charioteer's up there, he gets shot one second. You, know, you shoot the driver of your car, your chauffeur, and your car crashes, you're dead. He, he can't, the driver can't be seen on a chariot in Malabar. No one can see, he's down, the horse, there's six, eight, six horses, where Arjuna have four horses, I don't know. How many horses are Arjuna have? Four horses, what are the names? <laughs> They're in, the, they're in the Dwarka Leela because Krishna takes uh, Arjuna to the spiritual world. There's four horses. Mega Push, Mega Musko, Mega Pushra. Well, Mega Pushra is dark blue in color. And anyway, so they're sitting down where the axle is of the chariot. You can't see him. You see, Arjuna can see shooting arrows. And Krishna, how did Krishna give signals to Arjuna? He steps on his shoulder. Krishna's, under, uh, Krishna's feet are at the level of, Krish, of Arjuna's, Arjuna's feet are at the level of Krishna's shoulders. So he presses his shoulder, go right, go left, go right, go left. Go fast, kick him in the back, go fast. Okay. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> in 
inconceivable. So where's big and low here in this loving relationship? So therefore, eleventh chapter of Gita, I'm scared. Let's get this thing out of here. Get this Roger out of here. Question. You have a question? No question. <laughs> we are <all> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you have another question? Your hair is cool, I like it. Oh, thank you. It looks really fancy. Thank you. Very li lively. Matches your personality. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice. You got your hip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm square. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. What's question? Nice, nice seeing you. Huh? He's got a good voice. Nice voice. <laughs> five minutes guitar, ten minutes bhajan. Five minutes guitar, ten minutes bhajan. This is Vishwasi Sata. <laughs> Seven days they sing bhajans. They just sing songs for seven days and speak some Bhagavatam for a few minutes. <laughs> People love it. <laughs> okay, questions. G. Jan Takarani and Gopinath. Krishna. 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 I don't know what's bona fide or what's correct. The question is asked about Radha Gopinath Temple in Vrindavan. Of course, most historians say the original Radha Gopinath Temple, the original Gopinath Murti, went to Jaipur. <clears throat> He's in Jayapur, a beautiful temple. All ladies go there, all the ladies in Saki Bhav worship in that temple. It's interesting because when you go to Govindaji temple, it's mostly men worshiping Govindaji. In Mangalarti, oh, some women are there, mostly men. So Govindaji is the men's, men's Krishna, and Govindaji is the ladies' Krishna. So you go there. You go, I've been there many times in Jayapur, the Govinath Temple in Jayapur, Radha Govinath. All women are there doing bhajans and singing and doing puja. And one guy plays dolak, one guy plays drum, and 25 ladies sing. I guess he's in Gobi Bhav himself also, by the male form. So, Pandaji's asking a question about some leela about Ma Janava and Govinath. Well, the first leader was Mahajanava came to Vrindavan, visited Radhakun and Vrindavan, all the temples, and she knows there's no Radharani. Govindaji has no Radharani, and Govindaji has no Radharani, because they were, when the, they were discovered, Rupa Goswami just discovered Yoga Maya Devi, and Vrinda Devi and Govindaji. So Jara said, Krishna should have Radharani. So Jara made arrangements to have Radharani carved or made or whatever, manufactured. One Radharani for Govinath, one for Govinaji, and maybe one for Madame Mohan also, I think so. So when they, when they bought the Divi, when they bought the Mortis to install them, they, they, they said that the Morti of 
of Radharani looks like Janamata because it, Stavadi, the person who's carving the murti of Radharani, was a disciple of Jav, Ma Janava. <laughs> so the disciple is a murti maker. He made murtis of Krishna, four deities of Krishna called murtis. He was thinking of his guru, Ma Janava, and so he made a Ma Janava murti. <laughs> So when they came, they said, well, this is, this looks like, in the Pajari, this looks like Janamata. So they, so they put her on the, put Janamata where Radharani stands. Because Janamata is, as another form in Krishna Lila, as Anangamandri, who is Radharani's younger sister. So taking the place of Radharani Murti, which was not there, the Jana became the Ra, took Radharani's position. Then they made another Murti to be more like Radharani. You got another Stavati. They got another Murti carver that would make would make a Radharani and not a Jana. So then they bought that Murti and installed it on the other side. So on the left hand side of Kovinath, where Radharani usually stands, Ma Jana was standing there. On the right hand side is is uh, Radharani. Obviously, the regular. That's what story I heard when I lived in Mardavid. And then one time, Ma Janava came. They they say, I don't know if it was Vrindavan, I, I don't know, it's not it's a little unclear because there's Radha Gopinath in Vrindavan. And then, because what happened is the deeds, original deeds of Vrindavan, Gopinath, Kabinaji, Madhavan, when, when the Mughals attacked Vrindavan, the deeds ran away. For safety. So they first ran away to Radhakund. Then from Radhakund they went to Kamvan. From Kamvan they went to Jayapur. Then the Jayapur uh, princess married the prince of Karoli and took uh, Madame Mohan to Karoli. It's the original Madame Mohan from Vrindavan is now in Karoli. Because the princess said, I'm not going to marry that guy that prince from Crowley, unless I can take my Christian with me. Because she loved Christian more than a prince. That was smart. <laughs> smart lady. So John, they say, and because they see, they stay, they stay sometime, Gopinath Kovinji Madaman, stay sometime in Radhakun and Kamban, there's also temples of these deities here. And they all, all, all were originally one trust. The Govindaji Trust controls the temple in Vrindavan, and they originally control it here in Radhakund, and they control one in Govindaji and Kamvan, and in Jayapur. Four temples, one trust. And the same thing with Govindaji Temple. Govindaji Temple, Prachin Govindaji Temple, and, and you know, down there by Radharaman. And this temple and one in Kamvan are all controlled by the same trust even today, I believe so. And because uh, Krishna Shamaji is a majority there. So it's like that. So they say that John was visiting Kavan and she was saying Darshan Radha Gopinath, and John was there. And that when she was taking, because some people say it was Rindavan, some people say it's Kavan, this Leela. So Ma John was taking Darshan, and all of a sudden she disappeared. The curtains, curtains closed and she disappeared. And Bajari was there, said that Gopinath reached out and grabbed, grabbed John and took her in the altar. <laughs> and he, he merged, he merged John into the Java Murti or into, into his body or whatever. That's the story I heard. So that, that's how John Amata left this world, disappeared. She entered into the Gopinath deity. In Kavan, maybe in Kavan or Brindavan, I don't know. You must be knowing. What do you know? Have you heard the story? Yeah. That's a great story. How did Lord Chaitanya leave this world? Tota <laughs> There's three stories of Lord Chaitanya leaving the world. 
by people from Orissa, Ria, Ria, what do they call it? Odia, Odia, and by Bengali pundits and scholars. But one story is they entered the ocean, didn't come back. And one story is he stepped on a thorn and went into, uh, during Rath Yatra, and he went to Gondicha, not to spy Gondicha. Another story that Gaudi Vaishnava was propagate, he entered Govinath, Tota Govinath Murti in, in Chatak, Parvat, Chatak Parvat Sand Dune, which is near in Jagannath Puri. There's a temple there at Tota Govinath, sitting down, Govinath, Govinath sitting down like Atsa, playing flute. And Alita and Vishaka are on either side of him, they're also playing flute. <laughs> so I was playing flute. It's a flute, flute concert. Lita playing flute, and the, uh, Ra Rani, I guess it's Ra Rani. He used to love Lita Ra Rani, I forget actually. But it's going out sitting down, I guess it's Ra Rani, it must be Ra Rani and Lita playing flute. And then the, on the leg, on the knee of, above the knee, the right knee of, or, Left knee, maybe left knee. I think it's left knee. It would make sense to be left knee, but I'm not sure. But above, there's a golden line. It's, it's a black granite morty. There's a golden line there, a visible golden line. And you see, that's where Mahab Gold, Golden Lord Mahabhu entered there. He merged in a deity, so to speak. He became one. Praying with Lincoln, the two became one. Because Mahabharu is in Rarani's Mahabhav and Govinath's Krishna. So Rarani's Mahabhav merged with Govinath. That's the story about that, how Mahabharu left this world. That's nice. We'll merge into the waters of Radhika and Shamaka or ashes. <laughs> we'll be burned here and ashes will be sprinkled there. Shankar Naka, bye bye. I'm rich in there. My Guru Day, we put his ashes there. Shankar Naka. From dust thou art, dust thou become. That says that in the Bible. Dust means Vatsma, Vatsma means ashes. Nothing yet serious about it. <laughs> Questions? Questions? Too many questions. Do you have a question? Yeah. Your friend's questions? No, just the money. Okay. Okay, we start again at the top. Okay. How it's for being here? Now we are here with friend Adam and we hear the God of power and the mercy of but uh, unfortunately, I have to leave <laughs> some, at some point. And how it's possible, of course, there is Fundavan in the heart. But also, yeah, the place by himself, here Fundavan is so much So how is it possible to stay in Berlin also in the right mood and get the blessings of Fundavan? What's the question? I was going to strike it, right? How oh, is it possible to stay in Berlin with the same mood of Vrindavan mood? Because Vrindavan we know, here we have the place by himself. How you stay out of Vrindavan, anywhere, but with the mood of Vrindavan? Yeah, to get the blessings always everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> I've been living here for 35 years. I never left Vrindavan. I don't I can't conceive of that situation. But I did come and go many times before I moved here. And when I was out of, out of Vrindavan, I was always trying to stay in touch with Vrindavan. I had a bunch of books I bought tour books of Vrindavan and, and I, would look, I would look through those pictures all the time and think about the places I visited and think about the leaders that I heard described to me 
You know your heart and mind is from endowment. So show that. Don't hide it. It's not something to hide. It's something to share. You always say, right, right. You always say, right, Yeah, what's it to you, man? <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> Stand outside. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big lady, you Take her out. <laughs> Take her out. One, two, out. <laughs> you should be an, you should be an ambassador of Rodani's love. That's what you know, that's what you came here to find. And you should find it and distribute it. Ambassador of Rada Prem. <laughs> Indian Ambassador of Rada Prem. <laughs> Jai Rade. Jai Jai Shri Rade. Vrindavan Vihari Lala Ki Jai. Thank you, Yahi Lala Ki Jai. Kavi Shara Mahadev Ki Jai. This thing is so squishy. It's cushion, right? It's bad for my posture. It's nice, it's actually comfortable. Um, I can't, yeah, it makes you kind of want to straight. Okay. Huh? Yeah, I tell you that because I'm hurting my bag. Some kind of new question you got. It's too. too no, it's, yeah, it's, the bag is going like this. <laughs> dancing. <laughs> back one, back one is dancing and it uh, doesn't feel comfortable. Should just stay one place. And... <laughs> and I'm used to that. <laughs> it's like sitting on a jelly bean or something. <laughs> 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 okay, question is. <laughs> wait a wait a minute. Question, you have a question? Not now. Yes, no? Not now. Not now, okay. Alright, <laughs> okay. Uh, what is the story and the lilas of Dominda Brenda Kun. Govinda Kun. Govinda Kun. Ask Indra. Ask Indra. It's a long story. It's all about Giraj. I mean, you know, that's. Uh, what's the, what's the story about Govinda Kund? Govinda Kund is all it's all a different chapter of the Govardhan Lila, the Anukut Mahotsa of Giraj. The coward man Nana Baba and all the coward men they used to worship all the devotees like Radharani worships Sri. They, the coward man would worship Indra because he's a god of rain, and rain makes the grass grow. And the grass they feed the cows because they don't grow any crops. Nanavava didn't have any fields. He just he's a wanderer. He's go. It's called Gosta. He just wander wherever the grass was green. He bring all the cows there, munch up the grass, and wander somewhere else. They didn't. They didn't have any fields. They didn't plant anything. So they, if they did rain didn't come, they couldn't get any wild grass. The cows would starve. So they, every day, every year they did a big puja around Kartik time. They did a big puja to Indra to worship him. So Indra, so Krishna one day he said, "Why are you wasting time, Indra? We should worship Giraj because Giraj 
because actually it's a fact that mountains, rain and mountains go together. Yeah, like a lot of times they break up all the mountains to make road, roadway. Like Rajasthan government sells all their mountains or so many hills and mountains in Rajasthan. They sell them to mining companies. Mining companies blow up all the mountains and make all rocks and make road for roads and all this stuff. So that's very bad for weather because the rain doesn't come. Because mountains emit ions. All those rocks and all those granite and marble and all those rocks and mountains, they emit ions, in, ions into the atmosphere. Those ions ignite the clouds and cause clouds to form and rain to fall. So by taking away the mountains, it's, gonna, it's, it's already like a desert in Rajasthan. The whole place will be a desert. So Krishna had a right theory. He's saying worship the mountain of Giraj, but they say, he's we're getting ready from Giraj. We don't need to worship Indra. Giraj is rain comes from Giraj, not Indra, <laughs> because Giraj is Krishna also. But that's one point. And the other point is that Giraj gives us so many things for the cows. There's so much grass growing on, on Goron Hill, and there's natural fruit trees, and many things are there for the cows' health and happiness. And exercise, they like to walk on the mountain slopes in the valleys of Gorodon. So we should worship Gorodon, and we should worship the Brahmins. We worship the cows, we should worship the cows, the Brahmins, and Gorodon Hill, Giraj. Because these are our, our good luck and benefit and success comes by the blessings of the Brahmins and the milk of the cows and the health of the cows. So forget about Indra. So they had a big sacrifice and puja they did to Giraj. <coughs> While they're worshiping Giraj, then Giraj, from the top of Giraj, a form of Krishna manifests out, a huge form of Krishna. And little Krishna says, oh look, Giraj accepted our offering. Well, Giraj personified. Indra is a person. Giraj is also a person. He never uh, said, "Look, it looks like you." Because <laughs> he was saying, "Color Krishna." He was a big Krishna, a big Gopal. So Krishna, yeah, we show our arti to him. <laughs> so Krishna our arti to himself. Our big arti, and then the big feast, and, and Giraj ate everything and had a good time. And then Indra said, what's this? These guys are not doing my food. He got angry. And he sent all kinds of thunderbolts and lightning bolts and rain cloud and winds and everything. Some Vartika, Meg and clouds. And, and flooding all the whole place. Everything was getting flooded. So then Krishna, all the British brothers said, Krishna had to save us. They had to save the cows and save us. Said, okay, no problem. This hill, we're worshiping this hill. This hill will save us. How so? I'll turn it into an umbrella. I'll lift up the hill, be a big umbrella. It's 30 yojans long, 15 yojans wide, it's huge. So they lifted it, and everybody came over the hill. So Indra was defeated. And Indra got, was really feeling afraid that Krishna had come and mock Baba Mahab. <laughs> Krishna had kill him, kill Indra. So he went to Brahma, Indra went to Brahma and said, what can I do? And Brahma said, you have to go down and do Abhishek of Krishna. You made a big offense to Krishna. You should do Abhishek and take a cow with you from heavenly planets. It's not a spiritual cow, it's a heavenly planet cow. It's called Surabhi. And do bathing, bring Ganga water and your, your elephant, Rai Ravitish, bring Ganga water and the cow will bring milk. And you do Abhishek with Ganga Jal and cow milk. So the injured did that and all the water he stood on a place called Govinda Teela, which is near Govinda Kun, this little hill. Krishna stood there and the cow and the elephant I robbed to bathe Krishna and all the water came down and made a big kun. So Govinda Kun is a charmita of Krishna Abhi Shake. So it's very really purifying. It's described in different Puranas, it's a very ancient place very authorized place. Many yogis and pujas have been done at Govinda Kun over the last 5,000 years. It's a very famous place for yogis and pujas. Govinda Kun is Charamita from Krishna being bathed by Indra Dev. Govinda Kun Kijai.
At that time, Krishna, Krishna wasn't called Govinda, it was called Shama Sundar, Madhav, Kaniya, and Nanda Nanda, and Yashodala, Nanda Dala. He wasn't called Govinda. Because Vinda, Vinda means, Vinda means giver of delight, a go means cow, one who makes the cows happy. The word Govinda means one who makes the cows happy. So Indra said, you're the lord of the cows. Govinda also means, Indra, is this Govinda, Vinda means, in, in means Indra. The word Indra means king. Or we say Gopendra, we say one name of Nanabhav is Gopendra, means he's the lord of the cows. Indra means king or lord. So, the, the, in, in Govind, the I-N-D, it means Indra. So, Indra said, so you're the Indra of the cows, you're the lord of the cows, you're the master of the cows. So your name is Govinda. Go means cow. G-A-U, go. So he got the name Govinda from Indra. And that kun is the kun, uh, the kun from Govinda's Abhishek. Hiraz Dharan Ki What time is it? 4, 23. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, okay, right, some questions. Do you speak Russian? He speaks Russian. <laughs> You can ask a question, you can answer it. You can translate if you have any. Krishna Baba, any questions? Question, Prashna. Prashna. Yeah, okay. Gurudev, uh, my question is that uh, we have a saying in English also, God helps those, those who help themselves. So, in, in the same way, my question is that uh, if we take seriously bhakti, then only Guru and others will help. If we don't take seriously bhakti, then Guru and others also, uh, their mercy will not help. Is that correct? No. Or it, it will help, it will go away, just by Guru's mercy, everything will happen. Is this, this is the... well, what's your question? A lot of questions mixed up there. Mm -hmm. yes, my question is, a disciple has to take seriously then only mercy will work or mercy will itself work without taking disciple things seriously. Efforts. Without putting disciple efforts properly. That is the question. The question is, will the mercy of Guru work on the disciple whose nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> A knuckly, knuckly disciple. Knuckly wallow. Knuckly vodka. Not sincere. Why not? Mercy always works. Where was Shagai Madai's sincerity? Because we're Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Gaudiya Vaishnavas don't care about sincerity or adhikara qualification. They just carry out some interest. He has some interest in Guru Krishna, then everything else will happen by mercy. Because the compassion of Gaudiya Vaishnavas is unlimited. It doesn't depend on borders, borders and barriers, and qualification or not qualification. The story of Gopa Kumar and Briyad Bhagavatamrita, he got the Gopal Mantra. He didn't get what mercy he got from his Guru, he never met his Guru. Guru never told him anything. But he was connected to Guru, and so Guru was thinking of, obviously Guru was always thinking of his disciple, so Guru ran away in his own ecstasies and didn't see his disciple again. But he was thinking of his disciple and praying the Bhagavan for his disciple. The Guru doesn't say, oh, you're my disciple, you're not, so it's okay, I'm not going to pray for you anymore. I just, your name's scratched over this. It's not like marriage and divorce, you know. It doesn't work that way. I once in the temple, Prabhupada was the only guru of all the disciples of Prabhupada and some temple president uh, discouraged some new devotee and the devotee ran home, went home. 
And Prabhupada came and said, where is Krishna Das? He said, he went home. He said, why? He said, the temple president was heavy, heavy with him and he discouraged him, so he ran home. He wasn't happy here. So the prophet called the president and said, you're nonsense. Why you drove him away? Somehow he surrendered his life to Krishna. Go to his house and go find him. Tell him I want to meet him. And he lived far away from the temple. So the temple president drove very far away, pick him up and said, Prabhupada wants to see you. So Prabhupada, the guru never gives up a disciple unless he becomes offensive to Krishna or offensive to Vaishnavas. It's just it's typical Maya. <laughs> typical Maya nonsense. That's no reason for discarding or breaking some amount of a guru. Like you can't break the relationship with Krishna either. Sometimes it's favorable, sometimes it's unfavorable. So you can't break the relationship with Guru either. Sometimes you're in a favorable posture. Sometimes you say, well, it's not a favorable posture. But the Guru is always favorable. Like your father has two sons. One's living at home, he's well behaved, he's nice, no complaints. One guy runs away, he's always <laughs> wiring for money. <laughs> Dad, I'm in jail now, I need some money to get bail. Okay, bail you out of jail. <laughs> and then he said, I need some money, I'm leaving the country. Why? Because they're after me. I'm gonna, uh, I want to get out of the country for the rest of you. He said, okay, fly away. So, so, so the father still has the kid, you know, because he loves the kid. Whether you have a good kid or a bad kid, the father loves him. Oh, I said, what's going on? What, what's the point of being guru? What's the point of accepting responsibility? For disciples, unless he loves them and cares for them in any circumstance. <coughs> so, Guru Kumar, he just got the mantra, and the mantra itself worked miracles. Well, you're really gone, you're, you know, stop saying mantra, stop saying java, still, Guru Kriva will save you. Just remember your Guru. Guru, please save me. I met you, I was connected with you, now I'm forgetting you, please help me. Then Krishna will come and pick you out, bring you to Vrindavan. <laughs> it happens. There are many stories that are happening also. Prabhupada's disciples. It says Vaishnav Kripambudi. Vaishnav Kripambudi means ocean, Kripa means mercy, compassion, love. Vaishnav means Savodhya Vishnu, Krishna Ram. <laughs> Don't worry. No attention. <laughs> no attention. <laughs> Have two police put a camera in front of him too. One here, one there. <laughs> he's uh, he's live broadcasting. <laughs> he's fracking his akshars. Da ga ga ba pa da 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 pa 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 ma 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 ma. He was Sanskrit funded in the making. We <laughs> just assembling them piece by piece, year by year. We just practicing being front, performing from an audience. <laughs> Not too nervous. <laughs> okay, still in the show. Yeah. When Radharani goes and decides to come to Radhapur, then Radharani decorates herself in a very, very differently. Putting her vegetables here, necklace here. <laughs> so, upside oh, down. Yeah, but my question is that, Guru, that on the way, many sakis, many manjiris, everyone see what is happening. Means in the rush she is going, but when she peacefully picks flowers and all that time also, why no one arranges? Means just Krishna. Everyone knows that Radharani will be very happy if Krishna arranges them. That's why it is like that. <laughs> there you go. The question is, 
Whenever uh, Ronnie goes an Abhisar, which means journey of love, love journey, Abhisar, to meet her beloved Krishna, she goes into a tizzy. Tizzy means she gets really excited because she's going to meet her lover. And her brain doesn't work too good. She's operating fully out of heart and emotions. Emotions and heart don't have a brain. <laughs> There's no brain and emotions and heart. That's a brainless experience. <laughs> but it's okay. It's also important not to have too much brain and get in the way. They say bhakti, if you have too much brain, you can't be a bhakti. Bhakti is a blend of mind and heart, brain and heart. Uh, some brain, not too much, but, but a lot of heart. <laughs> heart is more important here than brain. In yoga, brain is more important than heart. In gyan, brain is more important than heart. But bhakti, heart is the primary element. Brain is also required, but not secondary position. So the question is asked, when Rani goes out of Ravi, sir, she's all topsy-turvy dressing. It says she wears the upper part of her dress on the lower part. She wears her ankle belts around her neck. How that fits, I don't know. Got a pretty small neck. Uh, anyway, and she wears her waist belts on her ankles. Now, how's that work? <laughs> waist belts are big, ankles small. Waist belts, uh, so every, and she has cudgel, you know, sh eyeshadow, mascara, whatever you call it. Cudgel on one eye, lipstick on the top of it, not the bottom. Really haphazard dressing. So all these suckies are going with her, traveling with her, running down a footpath to Radhakund or to Vamshivat to meet Krishna in the morning, afternoon, or evening. So why don't they, why don't they take a pit stop and take time out and dress her up pukka and properly correct everything? But they do it as he answered, in the dust she answered. They literally don't touch Radharani because she made herself up like that, because she likes Krishna to do it. Likes Krishna to put everything right, redress her, and paint her eyes, and made her lips. Krishna says, oh, let me fix your lips. And he paints, your top lip doesn't have this on. It looks very good now. It looks even better if he kisses my lips. So then, so I finish your, I finish painting your lips now. I finished my lipstick on. There's one more thing we have to check out how it works. <laughs> we have to see how it works. Put it, kiss me here. Okay, so Rara and kiss here. How about here? Okay. And then the Manjri holds a mirror. Oh, it's working good. I, I did a good job. I have red, my lips are now red and my cheek is red. I'm good. <laughs> so Rara is dressed like that to give Krishna an opportunity for seva. He's like a temple commander. Always trying to engage everyone. <laughs> always, always trying to engage everyone in his service. Prabhu! Dada, Dada Ji, or Didi. Yeah, what's your service? What are you doing now? Oh, I made garlands for Takaji. What are you doing now? Now I'm sleeping. Wake up. <laughs> Go wash the pots. Oh, come on. Yeah, wash the pots. Okay, wash the pots. Now what are you doing? I'm sleeping. Tell him to wake up. What are you doing? Okay, load the Sangerjan van with books. Okay. So like that, Seva. We have a phrase, Seva will save you. S-E-V-A, S-A-V-E. -E. Seva will save you. Save you from Maya. What's up? Ah! Maya man. There he goes. Exit stage left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the question now? Where are we? Where are we doing? <laughs> Where are you going? Crazy, you want to come? When we were American, people used to call each other up or used to meet somebody and say, Where are you going? I'm going crazy. You want to come? <laughs> you want to come? <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going crazy. You want to come? Yeah, let's go crazy. Okay. Hop in the car. Whoa, you go crazy. <laughs> 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 
being crazy with friends is more fun. Long crazy is also fun, but <laughs> two or more make it more more fun. <laughs> Questions? Maralika G. Arjun Saka also, he hasn't shoot arrows. <laughs> Gandhi Raj. Arjun Saka, the coward boyfriend of Krishna named Arjun, was his relationship with Shaka? I don't know. <laughs> I can't say. Well, Gorga and Deshtivika has all different kinds of identities of people. It gets, makes it confusing sometimes. So maybe there's some, some connection there. Because what it said, well, I know where you're coming from. There's Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy is in Goranga Lila, he's Ramananda Roy. But in Krishna, he has a, is a whole different person, a whole different form. And his form is Vishaka. Vishaka Sagi is Ravan and Roy. So, and that Gorgon and Steve is his Ravan and Roy is Arjun, he's Vishaka. That's where you're trying to make this connection. So, I, it's just his idea. Now, that book is <laughs> it's not exactly, it's pretty much accepted as Praman, but there's, you have to understand, because I went through this book with my teacher, but it says, it says, Kechit, Kechit Ahu, Kechit, K-E-C-I-T, C-H-I-T, Kechit Ahu, <coughs> which means some people say, the phrase some people say is used about 48 times, 48 times in Gorgon Deshiva. Some people say, some people say Ramananda Roy is Vishaka, other people say he's Alita. And this, and I say is this, so Kavi Karnapur, who is pretty much accepted what he gave, but he sometimes quotes other people. Even Kavi Karnapur, Kavi Karnapur is the son of Shirananda Singh. He says, my father says he's so-and-so, but I say he's so-and-so. So it's, it's not very conclusive. It's very hard, loud, volume. Hard to speak, hard to hear. Loud. It's full, full blast. You know? You can hear what I'm saying in one ear, <laughs> half an ear, quarter of an ear. So the identities are given in Gorgon and Shiva and they're pretty much accepted by Gaudi Vaishnava as, as authentic and real, but they're not the final word. Because uh, Kunjri Haridas, Prabhupada's disciple, one of my uh, god brothers, who knows and speaks perfect Hindi, he, he showed me a book in Bengali, had columns, had like Ramana and Roy had columns, of five different books compare who the authorized books by Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya is, uh, very prominent ones, well, who they said the different identities are. And many times there's not, the books aren't agreeing. So it's not a final word. Arjuna is Arjuna and Vishaga is Vishaga, Ramana and Roy is Ramana. Well, Ramananda Roy is Vishaka. That's clear, because mm -hmm. associating Ramananda Roy was very close to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and taught him all about praying. Taught Krishna about praying as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because only, only Ramananda Roy could know about Ramananda's praying because he's Vishaka. <coughs> it's 
not so important for bhajan to know all these fine details. Just know you Vishaka is your Tashri, Tulsi Mandri is your main mandri, and your Guru Mandri and Radha Krishna box. Guru Guru Mandri also. There's so many things. Actually next week I'll give you some papers about mandris and so Make it more complicated. <laughs> But, yeah. And uh, your articles also contains full manjaris. Rupa manjari, rats manjari, you know, bhagavad manjari or chant manjari, like this. I read your articles. What are you saying? What is she saying? So uh, there's the days of Naruto and different people. What are you trying to say? Champak Mantri is Naruto, Takura Mahasha, Tulsi Mantri is Raghunathas, sometimes called Rati Mantri, Rupa Mantri is Rupa Goswami. What are you trying to say? Translation department. <laughs> Ruski the English. <laughs> What's it called? Yes. An article, the essence of Raganubhakti. You say there that there are four Manjaris, but are people who created four. Yes. Rupa, Rati, Vinod, Valari, or Chapa. This means for Manjaris. <laughs> That's the author's prejudice. <laughs> What's the title of the article? The essence of the kind of the Yeah, okay. Okay. The essence of Ragnar Bhakti was written by a questionable character. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> It's on. <laughs> and in there it says there's four main personalities to consider. Now remember the article is Raghunaga Bhakti. It's not not, not in the spiritual world. It's a prak Raghunaga Bhakti sadhana. It's not Kamarup Bhakti. What the mantras are practicing is Kamarup Bhakti, which is in the spiritual world. It's, it's following Raghunaga Bhakti. Anyway. The article is about how to practice Raghunuga Bhakti. So in Raghunuga Bhakti, the most important characters are Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, who is Valari Vinod Valari Mandri, and Narutam Das Thakur, is Chakra Mandri, Raghunath Das, who is Celsi Mandri, and Rupa Goswami is Rupa Mandri. That's the way those four are lumped together. Now in practical dealings, in, in Nitya Lila, in Askai Lila, you won't, you won't be meditating much on Vinod Valari because he's a Narutam Parivar. Vishnu Chakra is a Narutam Parivar, so he'll be with Vishnu, the Narutam, Narutam Chambak. Chambak Mandri will be with Vinod Valari. But Ruba and Rati, Ruba and Tulsi, are, well, you have to focus on that. And in Siddharu, in Siru, Rubanji and Tulsi Mandri are important. In Sakuru, their forms as Narutan Das Sakur, Avishan Chakravarti are important. Read their books, study their books, worship them. You follow? But everyone has two identities. You have two identities. Marlika is another, another crazy girl. <laughs> Not so crazy, be more balanced. <laughs> crazy stays here in the material world. Spiritual world, no crazies. I don't know how I'm going to get there, though. Yes. One more question we have. Official question keeper. <laughs> oh, here we go. Translation of our. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Risky. It's strange for you. That's the first time they came in Brindam and other cool. That's nice. That's nice. The Premier was here about. Oh, okay, there's a lot of mosquitoes. Look at these guys swimming. So, uh, as a first. Okay, here we go. Okay. Last question of the day. Last question. <laughs> as the first time they arrived in Radakun and Rindava, and Not they sure. expected to, from what they read, they had high expectation, and yeah. they expected to have about this wow about spirituality and stuff, but maybe they're doing something wrong. Maybe why did they have this <laughs> kind of wow? <laughs> This, it's because they didn't found exactly what they there was a expectation. Is it kind of punishment for them or what's going on? So they asking these questions <laughs> as a question. <laughs> First time when he saw us, all these noises, a lot of low people, and she doesn't know <laughs> how to react to them. <laughs> That's an ordinary response. Persons asking. This is a Western person asking a question. This is the first time they've been to India, the land of Dharma, <laughs> Dharma Bhumi, the land of religion, rishis, sages, holy rivers, temples, mandirs. And her perception is as noisy as we're experiencing right now, <laughs> as dirty as we see everywhere dirty. And it's too many people, and it's too, going too fast, and it's too pushy. And what's the what's the big thing about this place? I I have better time in Greece or, or Italy or some nice beach beach place. There's many beautiful wow places around the world. I agree with you, but there's something here that's it's gonna have it's happening to you imperceptibly. It's a flow of pure love is entering your heart. Unfortunately, I first came to this holy land in 1977, way before you were born, and it was very beautiful. There was the whole Prickle Mark around Govron Hill. You went, you went around Govron Hill the other day. You went, hello, you went around Govron Hill. Yeah. When I went 77. To 80 to 85, it was dirt all the way around. No brick path, no brick inside path. It was all dirt. No, no motorcycles. Only little narrow path for people to walk. Outside trees and monkeys and bushes. Very beautiful. And I fell in love with the place. That's why I decided to live here eternally. I moved here in 87. And I was 77. It took me 10 years to finally shift over here. And then it's changed so much. But what, what still stuck with me from the beginning days is the feeling. The feeling of love. I felt a certain <coughs> sense, a certain transcendental feeling here, otherworldly feeling. I've been to Europe, I've been around, I've been to South America, I've been to the Caribbean, I've been to Europe, Canada, I've been around the world, a lot of places. I never had, I had a lot of good feelings, a lot of wow experiences. This is not external wow, it's internal wow. Well, what's happening to me? I'm getting transformed. There's some, something, something coming inside me. I think it's, I don't know, it's bhakti, whatever it is. I knew it was bhakti because I was a devotee at Hare Krishna when I came. Or, or initiated for two years. I came in 77. So I felt bhakti's in the air here. Devotion for Bhagavan, devotion for God is in the air. It's in the people, it's in the place. And you, you know, when you first come, you just have a bad feeling, you get sick, you get diarrhea, you get pneumonia, you get typhoid, you get malaria, any kind of thing you can get, and you really get sick, and maybe, hope, hope not. If you have a good friend to show you the way how to stay healthy and stuff, local, local guy, Indian person. So you should stay safe and healthy, I pray for that. But. Well, the first time you won't really experience what happened. When you go back to your country, some, something will happen inside. I, I guarantee something will happen. This, don't, 
don't, don't be too judgmental here. Just keep an open mind. It's a different culture. There's no culture like this in the entire world. No place like this in the entire world. No place so dirty, no place so noisy, no place so crowded. It's all negative stuff. It's all like, oh, get me out of here. And maybe you should go as soon as possible also. But if you don't feel happy, you shouldn't stay. You know, that's also there. You know, stay as long as you can tolerate, then fly out, run out. <laughs> race, race, get a race car, race out. <laughs> but I pray that the special, speciality of Rajmanda, which is devotion, bhakti, love for Bhagavan, that's what's high, that's what's hidden here. It's in the trees, it's in the land, it's in the people, it's in the air, it's in the atmosphere. I hope, I hope that comes inside you. Because that is something that you it's mystical and it's directly perceivable in your own heart. It's not here, it's here. You, you can't explain it, but you'll experience it. Then we'll meet again and you can describe it to me. Curious Garland, <coughs> open up, open up, probably. This is Krishna's Garland. So, Prasad. Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Okay.